if you are a Scala or a Java person, up until now, probably really haven't been able to use serverless unless you wanted to switch languages. That is not the case anymore because now with server serverless, you can use jar files. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so you can now run your jar files on serverless. Now, unsurprisingly, these jar files do need to be uh, Databricks compatible ones, um, and it is serverless version four and higher. That's a nice one for our Java and Scala people. Java and Scala people. That's not right, is it? I'm gonna leave that in there. Our Scala, our Scala people. It's in, it's uh, it's funny because I I started using serverless so much more, yep. and as a result, historically speaking, all that's done is I've become much better at Python. So okay. now you're telling me I can go back, yeah, and do stuff do stuff the old way. Where are we going to put this? So sorry, you say about kind of new development, but I think it's also really useful for people who are who already have things that have been deployed in kind of traditional clusters, non serverless, serverful cluster. Sure. That's not right, is it? Mm -hmm. Um, but. I genuinely think like some of the performance stuff that you get with serverless is incredibly impressive. So if you've got something where you kind of sort of half tuned it, but not really had the time to think about it, test it out on serverless, see what the performance is like. And you might actually save yourself a bunch of money with maybe a week's worth of work rather than having to go through and like really think about the tuning that you need to do in Spark like you would with kind of classic Java or Scala. Nice. Good call. Good call yeah. on, the, on the older workloads. Didn't consider that. Here's what we're going to do. Speaking of old stuff, and we're going to put like that another box on top of this. And we are going to write jar. <laughs> I can see some SQL written in there. If you just basically done spark.sql and now you're going to put. <laughs> That's enough questions. <laughs> uh... Okay. So straight up, we've got our first anti pattern. <laughs> The whole thing is an anti pattern. No, 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 this is fine. This makes sense. First of all, uh, it can still be written in Scala um, or in Java or something like that. Uh, actually, like, I, not, I mean, is it an anti pattern? Lots of people do this. Or to put exclusively SQL in a Spark.SQL statement and then put it in a yeah, Java yeah. file? Well, and it's not uh, the only thing that's going on. It's just like part of the code, right? So, I mean, if it's part of it, like, that's fair game. But if you're just taking some. Then SQL... that's what it is. That's what it is. Don't ask if me any questions. If you've been holding on using <laughs> SQL in serverless until now, and Jar is finally the thing that has unlocked it, I think there's other things going on. 